Hi, welcome back to another lecture. I do have other interests and I got involved in a big project in my home. This lecture is called Attic Air Leak Sealing 2022. Blown in insulation is virtually worthless if air sealing has not been done. And I have the pictures to prove it. Here's my 1993 home. I'm the original owner. The front faces west. Notice the level change to the north. That's where the green arrow is. I drew a red box. That's the attic above those two bedrooms. There's a bedroom there on the left and a bedroom there on the right. And I wanted to get above that attic or above those bedrooms into that attic and seal leaks. Here's my home from the back. It faces east. I drew a green box kind of a bad box or a little rectangle above the attic portion that's above the master bedroom and the master bathroom. Now there is another bedroom to the north that is as large as the master bedroom, but it doesn't have a bathroom. I've taken a red mark and I've scribbled that out. It's very difficult to get to that attic. There's no scuttle in the closet of that bedroom. And I'm going to show you later on in another slide the difficult process it's going to take me to get to that portion of the attic. I haven't gotten over there yet. We've done many improvements to the house over the past 28 years. We replaced the siding with vinyl siding. The entire house was rewrapped during that process and there's form-fitting insulation under the siding so it's more well insulated. We've added low emissivity window sashes which drastically stopped condensation on the windows by controlling the dew point. But that's a topic of psychrometrics. I'll talk about that another time. We've added new fiberglass Pella front door and a Pella fiberglass slider with low E glass. They're wonderful doors. They have no frost or condensation. So that was a very fine improvement. However, the home has always been drafty in the winter. It seems that the stack effect continues to be the same or actually grows as the years go by. I was 30 when we purchased this home. Why did I wait until I was 58 years old to leak seal the attic? I'm asking myself that question. Oh well, better late than never. The plan you ask? A remove insulation is needed. Leak seal when physically possible. Replace with bad insulation as needed cover with plywood. Why leak seal? To reduce drafts, to save money, eliminate moisture, but hopefully not create new problems. So that could happen. There could be some unintended consequences. I have to be very careful how I do this. What tools will I need? I'm going to need caulk, a lot of caulk. I prefer caulk to spray insulation. Bad insulation with a vapor barrier, four foot sections, I chose R30. I picked it up at Menards. 2x4 by, by one half inch plywood. I picked that up at Menards. A power screwdriver, plenty of wood screws, plastic garbage bags, gloves, a mask, and a cell phone to call for help if necessary. This is what my attic used to look like. Blown in insulation, 13 inches deep, covering everything. You can just see the top of that supply chase that comes all the way from the furnace in the basement and two of the flex connectors. There are actually seven flex connectors on that. Originally, you could only see two. I started a process of removing the old insulation, replacing it with bad insulation that was faced with a vapor barrier, put that face down toward the warm because I'm in a colder climate, and cover it with plywood. I know compression is not desirable, but I really don't care at this point. You're going to have to trust me. When you see underneath this, you're going to understand that this is a vast improvement to what I had. Yes, it's been labor intensive. You can see the scuttle there. Just to get started in one of the ceiling space or ceiling joists to get a four foot run going took me forever. But I just kept working space by space, one space at a time, being careful not to step through my ceiling from the sheetrock. But it's nice to be able to actually land on a platform up there rather than try to be an acrobat and go between the, the ceiling joists. One of the things I had to deal with a lot is wires. And so I had to do a lot of notching in places of the plywood so that I didn't pinch the wires when I fastened the plywood down. 
after I put the vat insulation vapor barrier facing down or facing warm. I've written the word void there. I want you to know that even before I cleaned that cavity out, that ceiling joist, to put the insulation in, there was a huge void underneath that flexible duct and the wires because the installers put their stuff in first. The insulators are the last guys in, and they just blow everything over the top. So there was already a huge void under that. It really had no insulation under there. So it was good to get everything out of the way and actually insulate down to the sheetrock. Air leaks are going to cause moisture problems. That warm air is going to leak up, it's going to freeze to the strand board, and then it's going to thaw, and it's going to drip back down through the blown-in insulation and leave staining on the ceiling in bedrooms and in hallways. What is this thing I found? Well, it was a little return jumper duct up there in the attic. I've pointed an arrow, and I'm going to show you how that works in some, some other illustrations later on. But that's the direction of flow, down through the wall cavity it, to a cold air return in a bedroom, down through the floor of the bedroom. On the back side of this little jumper duct is a flex connector tied to another bedroom. So it is actually now working return now that I unkinked it. And I'll explain that later. So I popped the lid. You can see that on the right. The direction of flow is the green arrow. Believe it or not, that's a return duct jumbered over to another return duct, and they do work now, and it's drawing air down that wall cavity. In the left-handed picture, you can see the top plate, the double top plate is cut out, and that is a cold air return tied to a bedroom. But underneath that cold air return, at the bottom of the wall in a bedroom, it attaches to a, another cavity that drags the air down to the furnace through a wall cavity to the return duct in the basement. Pretty weird, but I'll show you some pictures later on that explain it a little more. And the red arrow there is to demonstrate the gap that that duct created in the top of that wall plate in an area where I can seal air leaks. Progress is slow but methodical. I had to caulk that Romex hole, I had to caulk the tops of that wall plate there. And actually, I did finish where the ceiling joist crosses that the top of that wall plate. I just didn't get that in the picture, but you have to seal that also. Dirty insulation is a sure sign of air leaks. So once again, I had to do that top plate all the way over to the ceiling joist to stop those air leaks. Lots of fun caulking to do. I've marked in red the top plates, and then I marked in orange. You've got to caulk that too. And then there's an arrow pointing to a hole that was made seemingly for Romex, but it was never used. It was just left wide open. And look at all the dirty insulation. That's a sure sign that you've got a lot of air leaks. Cable is more expensive than I thought. I love my Roku. I don't even use the cable, but I've got cable throughout the house. And look at that penetration. I had to restaple the baffles that were hanging loose. Bathroom exhaust fan. You've got to seal it. That's a huge air leak. This vent pipe was a huge leaking spot with a lot of dirty insulation. And so you've got to caulk those. I had to actually reload my caulk gun to get this one done. As you can see, I'm making progress. The blue arrow is pointing to the flex duct that goes to the supply register or diffuser in the ceiling of the bathroom. The yellow arrow is pointing to the flexible duct that comes from the bathroom exhaust fan. And in 1993, it was code compliant to be able to run it to the soffit. That's no longer code, and I'm going to change that to be code compliant. It is quite the process to make progress. Bag the insulation, move into a cavity, put down bad insulation, cover it with plywood. It's been pretty tedious. Here's that return duct I was talking about. Notice the arrow. The arrow is the direction of flow of the return air. It's interesting. 
I'll try to tie it all together in another slide. All right, there is a lot going on here. So here is my supply chase with seven flex runs. One of those is a little return run. You can't really tell, but I'll point out where it's at. Orange is a supply run. So there's one of them, there's two, there's three, there's a fourth one. There's actually three more, but you can't quite see them. I didn't want to point them out. This is a return from one bedroom up the wall into the flex across the attic down that other wall of that earlier jumper duct I showed you. So it's quite ingenious and now it works now that it's not kinked and crushed. The red arrow there is pointing to or letting you know that underneath that flex duct and insulation that was hidden from my view was a gaping 11 by 11 inch hole. There it is. So there's the other little jumper with the flex return with the return air going up the wall across the attic floor to the other return being dragged down. But there's a gaping hole that's sitting beside the supply duct. And when you follow that arrow, or I'm going to show you an arrow, and I put my camera over that edge, and I took a picture, and it looks like this. So I have an open wall cavity for 28 years that has had blown in insulation fall down in it over the years. So I have this gaping hole to the atmosphere of warm air rising through my home in the wintertime, rushing out this 11 by 11 inch hole and dumping into the attic and then into the atmosphere. That's the insulation. That's the supplied air going up into the attic. And that is pointing to panning in a wall cavity. So we're using the wall cavity as a pan joist to go up to that little return over to the other return. So it actually works now, and it was actually installed well, but think about trying to seal that duct at this point, seal the pan or seal the supply duct. No thanks. I've done as much as I care to do right now. Here's another view of all this mess. The green arrow there is the return air on the top plate of the bedroom. The red arrow is pointing to the 11 by 11 gaping hole that was left behind. There again is the flow of the return air. And X marks the spot. I cut an 11 by 11 piece of plywood fasten it down, and then I caulked it as best I could. That makes me feel pretty good to eliminate that gap. Once that was done, I had to move to the back side of the supply duct. Look at that hole. And look at those nails. I can tell you it was pretty tricky for me not to scratch myself on those nails to get that sheetrock to cover that hole, to fasten it down, and then to caulk it all in without cutting myself. And I put a blue arrow there to show you once again that little jumper duct at the top of that other bedroom wall. So I really don't have a lot of complaints about the sheet metal work. It's pretty ingenious and it does work now that that flex connector is not kinked and crushed. It does work rather well now for the first time in 28 years. However, there were a lot of holes left in the building. So I, I'm not blaming anybody. I don't know who's responsible for that as far as I don't think anybody's given that responsibility. They're building homes a lot differently now to avoid problems such as these huge air gaps and air leaks to the attic. I'm starting to feel better about my home. This is looking to the southeast over the master bedroom and bath. Here's the southwest corner. We're getting better. So you can bet at this point I was starting to feel the pain. This is the northwest front corner of that one bedroom and I've marked the, the runs there and the return duct. So it's gotten pretty interesting. I haven't mentioned this before, but in case you were wondering, that metal B vent is for my water heater and that's original. 
running all the way from the basement out the, the roof of the house. The red arrow there is pointing the direction of the attic that is pretty much inaccessible until I build my way over there and crawl through that to get to that other attic. That's going to take me some time. The flexed duct mark master is for the master bedroom and that goes over to the ceiling diffuser. I took this picture because I wanted you to see the top of the supply duct before and after. On the left, I had stripped away most of the blown in insulation. I had put in the bad insulation and I was left with duct work that's going to be exposed to a hot attic or a cold attic depending on the season. So I took foam board and I took reflective insulation and I took spray adhesive. I sprayed it, put as much of the blown in insulation in those inaccessible regions around the flex connector. On the top I put foam board. I've since covered it with that reflective insulation. I didn't have it finished at that point. But on the back side, it was all I could do to get in there and put a spray or put caulk down and put a reflective insulation on the back of it. And then I covered it all as much as I could with insulation that I had held back, some of the blown in insulation that I held on to. So I'm hoping that this is very effective. The most accurate way to determine if what I did was effective is to perform a Minneapolis blower door test. I can tell you that my home used to leak 1,643 cubic feet of air per minute at 50 pascals. When I have the next test done, I'll let you know if there was a vast improvement. I sure hope so. Questions or comments, you can reach me at powerpointpreacher at gmail.com. I preach the word of God and I'm not afraid to get dirty. Don't give up on your faith in Christ. Don't give up on your home projects. You could say it took me three weeks to leak sea in my attic, or you could, t you could say it took me 28 years and three weeks. You wouldn't be wrong.